Thank you, Lord. Mm. We give you all the love we worship you, Allah. You are worthy to be blessed. Come, 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 Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you. 
Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Palaba Sakata. Father, we thank you for this. You are Alpha and Omega. Just thank him for being God Almighty. Just thank you for being God Almighty. Just thank him, thank him, thank him. Worship the Holy Ghost. Worship him. Worship the El Shaddai. Worship the Elohim. Father, we thank you for today. You are the Alpha and Omega, Lord. You are the beginning and the end, the ancient of days. We glorify your name, Lord Jesus, for there is no one like you. Thou art the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end, Lord. We worship you, Lord. You are God Almighty. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for the breath of life. We are living this day, oh God, by your grace and your mercy. Not by might. We thank you for the breath of life. There are many lying cold in the mortuaries, Lord. Some are lying sick in the hospitals. Some are in the grave. But the Bible says in Psalms 150, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Father, we praise you today. You are God Almighty. We thank you for life. Above all, we thank you for Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today's word. I ask, O oh God, for your grace to speak your word, your grace to minister your word. Touch our hearts, illuminate our eyes with that word, illuminate our hearts with that word. Give us direction with that word. Bless us with that word. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have given thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quickly, let's go to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians, chapter number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Today we have something which is a little bit different from the normal uh, normal put, uh, the normal messages. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, quickly, verse number 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 4. The NIV weapon says, the NIV version says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. In pulling down strongholds. Only verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. NIV version says. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty true God. In pulling down strongholds. Hallelujah. I am teaching this day. Today is a prayer meeting. Teaching and prayers. Today is warfare. Teaching and prayers. I want to teach this here on the locust as a divine weapon. The locust, we have the caterpillar, we have the canker worm, we have the power worm, we have the locust. The locust as a divine weapon. From the place we read from, which says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to God. It suggests to me that every believer is in a battlefield. If you are called a believer, you are in battle. Because you were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Therefore, darkness will not allow it. Darkness will not succumb to it. Darkness will attack. So every believer, every child of God, born again child of God, is in a battlefield. Whether you take it or leave it, whether you like it or not, it is certain. Once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the enemy will go after you. Therefore, you are into battle. As a matter of fact, once you receive Jesus, you enroll into the, bat into the battalion of Jehovah. God is a mighty man of war, a mighty man of battle, the Lord of hosts. Once you accept Jesus as a Lord and Savior, you become a soldier for Christ. And soldiers, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, it says, No soldiers in no soldier in active service is entangled with the civilian affairs. No true soldier is entangled with civilian affairs. Because a soldier is called a soldier because of war. And God is a mighty man of battle, the mighty man in battle, the Lord of hosts. Why the Lord of hosts? Why the mighty man in battle? Maka palaba sakata shaka my ba the banner over me which banner the banner that protects us in times of battle so it says 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God in pulling out strongholds. I want you to understand that one of the weapons God uses, or God uses, or used before, is the weapon of locust. We need to rise up to spiritual understanding of the scriptures. From the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, to the New Testament, the book of Revelation. From cover to cover, we need to understand what God has been doing. God is still speaking. God is still a man of battle. God is still a, is still a consuming fire. God is still the Lord of hosts. And his children are also soldiers, ambassadors, soldiers for Christ. Hallelujah. So I says, once you accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, you're already a role for battle as a soldier. And anyone who does not want to fight will be defeated. Hear me very well. Anyone who does not want to fight will be defeated. Because you must fight to possess your possession. Your possessions can never be given to you on a plate, on a table. Nobody, the enemy will not let it go. So you got to fight to take it. The Bible says from the days of John the Baptist until today, the kingdom of God suffer violence and the violent take it by force. From the days of John the Baptist till today, till now I'm talking, till now that I'm preaching, the kingdom of God suffers violence and only the violent, the Bible says, some, some versions say the violent, some versions say only the forceful men. You must be forceful to take by your possession. You must be forceful to take your treasures from the hands of the enemy. You must be violent to enter the covenant to take your destiny. You must be violent to enter the covenant to take your children, to take your marriage, to take your prosperity, to take your destiny. You must be violent enough to enter the altars in your father's house to take back your destiny for the kingdom of God so far violent. And only the violent take it by force. So if you are gentle in the world of today, calamity will be for you. Hallelujah. Today I came for war, not for peace. Mazakapala. Today is a prayer teaching and prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Today we have to pray the prayers. Elijah prayed and prayed. Today we have to pray and we have to pray. So let me, let, let me first of all lay the foundation before we can write on the foundation. Hallelujah. So I said before, like in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, 1 John 4, verse 4, the Bible says, Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. Greater is he that is in me. So he discovered that if the Bible said, Greater is he that is in me, which means that you are, once you become born again, you receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior, the Holy Ghost is a deposit in you. We carry the Holy Ghost in us. Why do you carry the Holy Ghost in you? It's not just to speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost affirms the believers that he's a child of God, correct? Also, in us, he empowers us for the battles. He empowers us for the battles, for the daily battles. Empowerment. He dwells in us for empowerment. Hallelujah. One of the empowerments is in the time of battle, in time of trouble, in time of affliction. Hallelujah. So you are already empowered to fight but you need to rise up to take faith. Once you receive Christ as the Lord and Savior, you're already empowered. But you need to activate the power. You need to release the power. You need to release the power. You need to manifest in the power of God. You need to manifest in the glory of God. Hallelujah. As a child of God, you are not a civilian. You are a soldier. For God is a mighty man in battle. Glory be to God. In Exodus chapter 15, let me lay a foundation. In Exodus chapter 15, verse number 3, the Lord is a warrior. We see that in Exodus 15, verse 3, it says, The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. In Psalm chapter 24, Psalm 24, verse number 8, we see again, Who is the king? Now, this is when we speak when we spoke about. O ye gate, lift up your heads, O ye gate. And the gate responded. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And the gates responded. Means they were not just fiscal gates. They were spiritual gates. Spiritual gate can be your uncle. Spiritual gate can be your mother. Can be your father. Spiritual gate can be your brother or sister. Spiritual gates can be anything that blocks you, that limits you not to achieve. Anything that diverts purpose or destiny is a spiritual gate. He said, lift up your head, all ye gates. And the gates answered, who is? He said, that the king of glory may come in. And the gates answered, or they asked, 
Who is the king of glory? So it's discovered that if there is no, if you don't have that fire in you to attack, as a matter of fact, before I continue, I used to play football before. I used to be a football player. Before I continue my message, let me lay something. Any team that attacks all the time often wins. One of the strategies in football is you attack all the time. Because the more you attack your opponent, the more they are pressurized. What we used to do is, I used to play midfield. So we used to carry the ball mostly into the calm of the opposite side. We press them. Only the, we press, we press, we press. Why? Because the more we press them, the more they can make mistakes. They can touch handball and that will be penalty. They can kick you in the ring and that will be penalty. So the more we press, the more they become frightened. And any attacking team is a winning team. From what I've experienced in football, also in basketball, because I do play basketball and volleyball. I play basketball and football. In basketball, if you, you attack all the time, you are the winning team. Likewise in battles. So if you are not ready to attack, means you are ready to lose. If you are not ready to fight, you are already failing. Even though you carry the Holy Ghost, it's not God's fault. It is your fault and your responsibility to rise up and fight. And the earlier you fight, the better. Because if you don't fight battles today, you transfer them to your children's children, generation. I'd rather fight my battles today. I'd rather fight for my children today. I'd rather fight for my generation today. That tomorrow my children will be battle free. If I only if. So I want to fight my battle. I want to fight for them today and end the battle for their lives to be better. Hallelujah. Assuming our parents fought for us spiritually. Most of us could have been far away, but they didn't fight for us spiritually. They sent us to school. Beautiful. They sent us to learn a trade. Beautiful. But above all, the spiritual controls the physical. They never took time to embark on the spiritual. They embark on the spiritual on a negative aspect in idolatry. Therefore, the family went into captivity. So the battles we are fighting today, most of the battle is because our families, our great-grandparents were into idol worshipping. Even our parents, even some of us today, we are still into idol worshipping. You may be wondering, why things are not working? You, you, you might be an idol worshipper. And God does not smile at idol worshippers. So, in Amos chapter 3, verse 13, Hear and testify against the house of Jacob, declares the Lord God, the God of hosts. In Hosea chapter number 12, verse 5, Hosea 12, verse 5 says, Even the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord is his name. The God of hosts, the Lord is his name. The mighty man in battle. I'm teaching this day on the locust as a divine weapon. We have to use the locust as a divine weapon. I am coming there. Every battle has a strategy. Every battle has a strategy. If you go back to the Old Testament, the way they fought on battles, they were, they were not the same. This time around, he would tell them, go and march down Jericho for seven days. Six days, no noise. Seven days, blow the trumpets. He wants to attack another uh, example, the Amalekites. He would tell them, stay behind or go around or stay this way or do like this. So every battle in the Old Testament we discover that if you study the prophets in the Old Testament, before they went for battles, God uses different strategies for battles. Per time. That's why he's God Almighty. But I want us to examine one of the weapons which was used in the Old Testament. And it is still used effectively today. The weapon of the locust. The locust. Most of us do not know that a locust is a weapon of massive destruction. Today we shall see it. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, soldiers need to know weapons of mass destruction. So, every battle has a strategy. So, every soldier must know the weapons to use for which battle. They must know the strategies and battle. Do not be ignorant of the device of the enemy. The enemy also has devices. So, we also have our own weapon, please. That's what the Bible said. The weapon of our warfare means we're into warfare. They are not carnal. means they are not man-made. They are not by human ideology. But they are what? They are powerful in the hands of God. They are not carnal. 
but they are mighty through what? To God in pulling down strongholds. Today, every stronghold in your life, as we pray today, they shall crumble in the name of Jesus. They shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. They shall be destroyed. They shall be destroyed in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, the war is not physical. Our battles are not physical. Remember, the spiritual controls the physical. So, most of our battles are not physical. We, we, we got to understand that. They are spiritual indeed. Spiritual inclined. Spiritually inclined. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, we all see, we know that scripture, what it says, for, the, for we rest not against flesh and blood. But against what? Against rulers, we, for we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Rulers in high places. In darkness. Why? Because the spiritual controls the physical. So as, we, as long as you are enrolled in the in the battalion of God, you are into warfare. The locust as a divine weapon. Many today, many today, many of us today are opposed by the kingdom of darkness in one way or the other. So we got to rise up and fight. It is not time to complain. It's time to fight. The same energy you used to complain, you can turn it Use the same energy to fight. Some people might say, I've been praying. Brother, and sister, listen to me. You cannot pray enough. The more you pray, the better for you. You cannot say, I have been praying. It's okay by me. Don't deceive yourself. The more we pray, the better. But when I say the more we pray, we have to understand what is prayers. There are different types of prayers. We got to understand that. There are different types of prayers. If you are talking about prayers or warfare, we have different approaches. Different approaches. And you have to understand what is the spirit back in you. The Holy Ghost must be present. It, ha it has to do with the Holy Ghost. It has to do with Jesus Christ. It has to do with the cross of Calvary. Because our warfare are won at the cross. We're won at the cross. So when I bring the cross, victory is mine. Hallelujah. Bring back the cross of Jesus Christ. So many are going through a lot of problems, challenges in their lives. I don't know what to do. But today, I pray God opens your eyes to know how to use this weapon we're about to use today. So one of the weapons we use is the locust in spiritual warfare, which God used. Now, in Exodus chapter number 10, let's go back to the scriptures. Because nothing which is scriptural is not okay. I like to uh, base my... Uh, my, 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 my my facts on the scriptures not just mental not mental but scriptural i like to dwell in the boundaries and the borders of the scriptures the bible hallelujah so in exodus chapter 10 verse number four pastor why do you say locust was used or is used as a weapon of warfare exodus chapter 4 chapter 10 verse number four exodus the bible says moses uh, god told moses it says if thou refuse to let my people go, we know what happened in Egypt where the children of Israel they were in captivity, in bondage, hard labor. Some of us are no different from the children of Israel in those days in Egypt. Some of us are living, but we are still in Egypt. Maybe family Egypt. Maybe household Egypt. Maybe father's house Egypt. Maybe mother's house Egypt. Maybe this environmental Egypt. Maybe work Egypt. Egypt can be in different places. Maybe accommodation Egypt. Hallelujah. So, it says, If thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow, I will bring, I, that is God saying, God says, if you don't let my people go, I, the Lord, will bring the locust into the coast. Did you see that? God says, I will bring the locust. Why did God not bring guns? No arms, no bullets. <laughs> he brought locusts. Why? Because the things of God are stupid before man, before a carnal man. But a spiritual man, a spiritual man can understand that God is not a man. God is God Almighty. Instead of fighting Pharaoh with weaponry, he brought locust. He brought locust. That's why his name is God Almighty. In verse 12 of Exodus 10 verse 12, the Lord said to Moses, 
Stretch your hand. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch your hand. Stretch your hand over the land of Egypt. And the Bible says, God commanded the east wind to bring the locust into Egypt. The locust as a divine weapon. And the east wind blew the locust into the land of Egypt. Now, may I ask you a question? The, imagine the size of Egypt. When you look at Egypt, Egypt is a big country. The locusts that entered Egypt were massive in millions. Where did the locusts come from? The locusts God commanded to enter Egypt. Where did they come from? Where were they residing? Where were they residing? Those locusts. They were not residing in any place. When God said, let there be locusts, they were made immediately. They were formed immediately. They were created immediately and released by the power of the Holy Ghost. That to show you that God is to be trusted. Hallelujah. So it says, and the locust came into Egypt. Remember, the locusts were the eighth plague. We had ten plagues in Egypt. Before they could leave them, they had ten plagues. The locusts were the eighth plague. The eighth plague were the locusts. Now, let's analyze before we pray. Analysis of locust. Number one, locusts, they have an invasive ability. They can invade. Psalm 78 verse 46. Psalm 78 verse 46. Locusts have the ability to invade. When the locusts entered Egypt, they invaded everywhere, even into Pharaoh's house. They invaded everywhere, the locusts. They started from the farms. They invaded all the crops. When the crops are invaded and they are ravaged, they will be farming in the land. And when there's farming, people will die. The locusts as a divine weapon. Number two, they have a consuming ability. Or they have a devouring ability. When locusts are sent, they devour. They devour the harvest. They devour the crops. They devour the labor of people. Some people can walk and have money today. The next two days, the money has disappeared. Why? There is an open, your pocket has an open hole. Maybe there's a lock, spiritual locust eating your money. You might not understand. Take the teachings today, serious. I pray may your eyes be open in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So they have, again, they have an invasive ability. They have a consuming ability. Second Chronicles chapter number 7 verse 13. Second Chronicles 7 13. We can see that they have a devouring ability. They have a consuming ability. They are also grievous. When locusts entered Egypt, it was grievous. It grieved them. Exodus 10 verse 14. Exodus 10 14. They were grievous. It has the ability to grieve a person or a nation. Locusts, they come in large numbers. Nahum chapter number 8. Nahum chapter number 3 verse 15. Nahum 3 verse 15. Locusts, they come in large numbers. Large numbers. So you cannot control them. You cannot control locusts. Now, we all understand and we know you can agree with me that of recent, if you look at what is happening in the world today of recent, in Kenya, so a few months ago in Kenya, they discovered that there were so many locusts in the farms in East Africa in Kenya. You can agree with me that. And the locusts, they devour the, the, they devour the, the products of the farmers in Kenya, in East Africa. Not long ago, I think four, three or four months ago, there was locust attack in Kenya, which they say for long it has never happened. It ravaged their products. And the farmers cried. It brought them to nothing. Just in a single day or few days, it brought down the products, the produce, the farmland, everything was brought down. Because locusts are seriously invaders. And they are devourers. The same locusts, when they finish in Kenya, they move to Pakistan. They moved the same locusts. They discovered that they became less in, in Kenya. And, they, and, and it's like their term of office finished in Kenya. They now discovered that they were now the same locusts 
Pakistan, the country of Pakistan, they discovered that the same locusts were in Pakistan ravaging crops. In the same month, the same locusts, they moved to Yemen. Yemen, they moved to Yemen, next to Saudi Arabia. Locusts also were ravaging crops. These are not normal things. They are spiritually inclined. The year of the locust. I'm talking about the locust as a divine weapon. Today we shall pray. Hallelujah. Now, what are the common futures of a locust? Locusts, number one, like I said, they are, no, they are numerous. They multiply very fast. Therefore, it's difficult to control them. So when I release locusts in the camp of the enemy, it's dangerous for them. Please follow me. I'm going somewhere. In Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse 38. Deuteronomy 28, 38. Joel chapter 1, verse 6. We can see that they are called a vast army. Especially in the book of Joel. Joel says a vast army has invaded the nation. Which army was he talking about in the book of Joel? Not the military, not people, not human beings. A vast army. Means they were referring to the locust. And they described the locust in the book of Joel. Which, which was not an easy thing. It was a fearful and dreadful thing. And the locust ravaged, destroyed the product. Their wine were all finished. And even in the house of God, lacked food, lacked bread. Why? Because the locust was at work. Today, the locust in your life, they shall be roasted in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So in Psalms 105, verse 34, Psalms 105, verse 34, we can see that the locusts are also intimidating as an army. They are called an army. Now, what is the prescription? Why do we use the locusts as a weapon? We use the locusts as a weapon when the battle is complex. Please follow me. I'm going so we have to pray. So that when you start praying, you will understand where I came from. When the battle is complex, we use the locusts. The battle was complex in Egypt. Let my people go. He said, no. Irrespective of the plagues, the first seven plagues, God has to come in. They had to send locusts. Because locusts is, a, is sent for complex battles. We can see in Exodus chapter 10. Hallelujah. We use locusts when we are dealing with household wickedness. When the battle is complex, we are dealing with household wickedness. We use the locusts when we are dealing with a network of because see let me tell you something child of god some battles are from a singular source one source some other battles they have network like we all know we have in business there's what we call networking business there are some businesses that are networking online they can we can network in business likewise in the spiritual realm we also network it's like somebody leaves their country and they travel to Europe. Now, the witches and wizards in, in their father's house have indicated to the international, international network that uh, person number A is traveling to this country, Europe. So, Europe is going to enter this country, Europe. So, the demons there take note of person number A, Y, Z. He's coming from a place. This is his file. They will transfer the file to the people over there. Continue. Continue the battle we continue here. That's why you may travel from your hometown and travel abroad and things are not still working and they are even worse. Why? Because your file has been transferred from your household to the demons overseas. For there's no distance. There's no barrier in the spirit. Listen to me, child of God. There's what we call networking. That's why there's no barrier because there's networking in the spirit. Hallelujah. So when, there's, when, when your battle has been networked, by all that things. Because sometimes we have battles from our father mother's house together. Sometimes father mother house and environment. So when, when you're dealing with a network of battles, you got to use the locals. When you're dealing with recurrent attacks, when the attacks are continuous and they're persistent, you have to use the battle of the locust. Now, what do we do? First, in order to use the locust, the first thing is you have to repent. Because, child of God, I want to submit with you with all humility before God and man. 
God does not hear the prayer of sinners. If you are living in sin, you pray and fast, God does not listen. He doesn't incline his ears to your prayer of sinners. He inclines to hear what the righteous are saying. The only prayer God listens from a sinner is when you surrender to Jesus Christ. When you surrender to him and accept him, he listens to that prayer. Salvation prayer. If you live in sin, you pray and fast. That's why you discover that when you sin, pray and fast, nothing happens. No breakthrough. No depression. So the first thing is, we have to surrender. We have to repent of any, every known and unknown sin. Some of us, we know the sins we have committed. No knowingly or unknowingly. Because sin is a hindrance to prayers. Hallelujah. Number two, you have to surrender to Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you can never win any battle in your life. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to God, to Jesus Christ. In pulling down the strongholds. So on your own, you cannot win any battle spiritually. It is all about the Holy Ghost. It's all about Jesus Christ. So you have to surrender to Jesus and make him the Lord of your life. Then now he now, the mighty man in battle, gets into the battle and fights for you. And will become more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. But Jesus must be your Lord, must be your shepherd. After you surrender, you have to invoke the blood of Jesus. You have to cover yourself with the blood. The blood is another weapon. We shall be studying this with time. The blood of Jesus is one of the most powerful weapons of believers, which we don't even know. And we don't, we don't even know, and we are not even using it. Hallelujah. When you invoke the blood of Jesus, now you have to wage war. You cannot wage war without repenting of your sins. You cannot wage war without accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. You cannot wage war without pleading the blood of Jesus over your life, over your environment. What do I do now? Please, before we pray, please, before we pray, take a few minutes, just take one minute, look into your life. Please, we have massive prayer to pray today. If you want to see results, follow what I am saying. If you want to see manifestation, look into your life, child of God. Begin to confess your sins to Jesus Christ. Begin to confess your sins to Him. Open your mouth and confess your sins to Him. If you are not born again, open your heart. Begin to, begin to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. If you are born again, child of God, begin to repent of your sins. Knowingly or knowingly, we are about to pray. If you are not born again, you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it is time for you to open up your life, your heart, and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my master. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I forsake my always. Forgive me. Cleanse me. With the blood, come into my life. Be my master. Be my savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we ask for forgiveness. Cleanse us. In the mighty name of Jesus. The next few minutes before we start praying, child of God, let's begin to sprinkle the blood of Jesus. Whatever you are watching from, begin to sprinkle the blood of Jesus over your life. Over that environment. We are about to pray ascetic prayers. Don't joke with these prayers we are about to pray. We have five prayers to pray. Begin to sprinkle the blood because we are about to enter into warfare. Begin to sprinkle the blood of Jesus in the spiritual. Take authority. Take charge. Child of God, open your mouth. Invoke the blood of Jesus. The fallen must take it by force. If you are willing to take it, that's fine. If you are not willing to take it, that's fine. The choice is yours. I am willing to take for me, to take for my children, to take for my family. The blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first prayer points we have to pray. I charge you, pray mostly in the Holy Ghost. Pray less with your understanding. Pray mostly in tongues. There is power when you pray in tongues. Prayer number one. 
The locust as a divine weapon. Prayer number one. Repeat after me. In the name of Jesus. Repeat after me. In the name of Jesus. The locust from heaven. Locate every plantation of darkness in my life. Uproot them. Devour them. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and fire this prayer. The locust from heaven locate every plantation of darkness in my life, in my children's life, in my wife's life, in my family, in Mount Zion, in our siblings' life, in our parents' life. Locust from heaven locate. Temara, 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 Temara. Haricoto, Haribada, Haricoto, Haribada, Iagada, 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 Ayabada, Akundala, Akadaba, Akadaba, Iagata, Iaga, Iaga, Iagodo, Iabada, Iagodo, Iabada, Aragagagagado, Aragagagado, Irogogo, Iragaga, Irogogo, Atuala, 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 Ipa. In Jesus, now we pray. Amen. Amen. Prayer number two. Prayer number two. Let me explain and we pray. Prayer number two. Locust of the Most High God. Locust of the Most High God. Invade every household, strong men and women assigned to devour my destiny. Locusts of the Most High God invade every household, strong man and woman assigned to devour my destiny. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it loud and clear in the name of Jesus. Locusts of the Most High God invade every household, strong man and woman assigned to devour my destiny. Open your mouth and fire this prayer. Kadoski baladada. You are caca dele gagagagodo godo. Bara 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 bara. In the name of Jesus. Baraga 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 baraga. Arakata 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 arakato. Kabala 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 kabala. Irekekeke irekekeke ragagaga. Ade bala iya bagada iya bagada. Atua atua atua. Baraga gaga gaga. Iya gaga gaga 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 Gagaga, <laughs> Da, 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 da. In Jesus, now we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We are progressing. Kala Bazuta. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Luke 18, verse 1. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Only men pray. Children don't pray. Men pray with stamina, with stability, 
by the power of the Holy Ghost. Prayer number three. Prayer number three. Locust from heaven. Locust from heaven. Repeat after me. No, let me explain first. Locust from heaven. Eat up every satanic seed planted in my life. Some people go around with satanic seed in them. Until when that seed is dead, you cannot see good things. Because the satanic seed, it speaks non, non favor sicknesses, rejection, accusation, almost death syndrome. There's a satanic seed which you have to kill. Today we are sending the locusts of God to eat up every satanic seed planted in my life. Say, my father, my father. Shout it out and clear. Say, my father, my father. In the name of Jesus, as I begin to pray, locusts from heaven, locusts of the Lord, eat up every satanic seed planted in my life, planted in my destiny, planted in my marriage, planted in my finance, planted in my health. Open your mouth and fire in the name of Jesus. Kabbalah te kapala ibaraka baraka 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 parade ibrakatu barakatu barakatu wadede wadalwa baruka barukanta akwamala akwamale akilaba akudada iratu ibalaga ilatu ibalaga akwamala kadilaba kadilos kobraga kadilos kobraga kadilos kobraga igabala balagada balagada araga Aragabe, paparade, paparabe, raquada, raquada, raquamila, raquamila, aqualagada, aqualabade, aqualabada, aqualabade, iragada, iragado, akada lama, akada labo, akada lama, akada labo, akada labe, abaria, abarabo, abaria, ibarada, ibarada, akalaba, akalabade, akalaba, akalabade, irokoto, iragada, irokoto. Irabaga, Aqualaba, Aqualaba, Ambilada, 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 Rogodo, Iragada, Irogodo, Ibaragada. In Jesus, now we pray. And we are progressing. Prayer number four. Kava tu pali mahanda gusadaba. Prayer number four. Let me explain. I use the weapon of the locust to clear every blockage in my life. Some people are being blocked by blockages, obstacles, limits which have been placed, satanic limitation, obstacles, not to get to their destiny, not to enter their place of assignment, not to enter their dream job, their marriages, business, businesses, etc. Locust of the Lord Jesus. Locust of the Lord. Clear every blockage on my way. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Matapala kopale daba. Yagadagadagadagadagada brakata. Ivatula kaka. Makwala. Zakwala. Imparu zahialala. Child of God, open your mouth and pray. I use the locust of the Lord to clear every breakthrough, every blockage in my life, every blockage into my destiny, into my career. I invoke the locust of Jehovah. Arise, Abala, Kwabala, Regede. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Libaga, Libaga. Kodoloba, 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 Mitala, Mitala, Gimbala, Kalama, Isuda, Kelaba, 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 Melama, Mekwa, 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 Shabada bada 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 bada. Thank you, Father. Pale mahodo bada bada bada. Thank you, Father. The last prayer we're going to pray. I invoke 
The power of the locust of God to repossess and reposition everything the enemy has stolen from me. I invoke the power of the locust of the Lord to repossess and to reposition everything that was stolen from me by the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Turn into prayer. Kabala Zokoto. Liva de 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 kubala deha. Ada ada arada. Kabala gana bagoda bagoda bragade. Liva gada bagoda bragade lego. Gelega de gado. In kwalaba. Zupa azupa azupola. Le kukate kete barakata. Ibala kata. Ibaro koda. Baro koda. Baro koda. Baro koda. Baro koda. Baro koda. Rikwale kata. Zipa baluta. Zipa baluta. Zipa baluta. Kenele. 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 Kalabalaba. Odo. 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 Rakaka. Baluta. Baluta. Gima kalabahanaba. Father we thank you. Father we thank you. Father we thank you. Thank you Holy Ghost. Please I want us to worship Jesus. Can we just worship him? Worship him. Thank you for answering prayers. Just worship him wherever you are. Worship him. Give him the glory. Worship him. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Worship him. Worship him, child of God, worship him. Worship him, worship him. He's bigger than we know. Ah. Mm. You are so be brave. I will give you glory, Lord. You are Alpha. Oh my God. Ah. Oh. Mm. 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 Thank him, just glorify him. Thank him, worship him. You are Lord. You are Lord to be praised. Ah. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Ah. Worship you, oh Lord. You are Lord to be praised. Ah, Give him the glory, Lord. Give him the glory. Oh, yeah. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Ayaka, papa, 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 body. Hey. Ah, you can live in it. Ah, little, little, little. Ah, Jesus. It's a Ufande Ututu Sikano Penito Sikaya Worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him, Miza Ufane Utu. Ah, 
شیمونی هم بلود تو بود میزاو زنده بود Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for answering these prayers. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Thank you for answering prayers. We worship you. We adore you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, name we pray. Father, I ask, teach us to use the weapons. Teach us to use the locus as divine weapon. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Child of God, remember, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Live a holy life. Live a righteous life. Worship him. Seek him. Adore him. Love him. He's coming back soon. Jesus loves you. Till then, shalom.